Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're talking about the surprising items that are revolutionizing our everyday lives. You know, you might you might say, man, that product sounds stupid. But until you find yourself or someone close to you using it constantly, you're like, man, maybe there's something to this. Well, also, I mean, I think this is something you thought you couldn't, you thought you could do without, but now you realize you, you need it. Can't like you need it, it all the Can't time. You, it. you need it every day. Uh, we got a lot of responses. You said you asked the question and you didn't finish the sentence. We said, what's the surprising item that has revolutionized your everyday life? Maybe it's a special tool, a gadget, something around the house, work, school, you know, just trying to jog people's thoughts because we put these prompts out there, y'all. If you respond to them, it we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about your perspectives. And we do this uh, we do this on, on Twitter. Twitter, you know, Twitter. So at mythical, follow us. Some people have created Twitter accounts just to participate. We appreciate that. That's nice. We hear you. Yeah. We notice. Um, so we'll get to that in a second. But something has happened to me two days in a row. And I just want to throw it out there and see if you uh, you think it's, it, it, there's any significance to it. Oh, significance. Uh, okay. This is not unusual. I think that lots of people talk about this phenomenon, but it hasn't happened to me in a while, and it's happened two days in a row. Okay. Waking up and knowing that I have woken up one minute before my alarm oh, goes off. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And not just not just looking. Un, it's uncanny. Not just looking over to guess, but having a a knowledge, and then looking over to confirm it. Oh, mm, okay. No, that's it, it, so you have a knowledge. Okay, your 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 eyes aren't even open yet, but you know you're you know you're waking up and you're about to look at the clock, and you're saying, "This is my my clock's gonna go off in one minute." Well, so you my, know that my phone is on a little stand, a wireless. Stand. Not. It's not something I, I. I. I can live without it. It's not an item that I'm going to talk about, but it is a new thing that I got that has my watch, my phone, yeah. and my air. But what do you call them? AirPods. I don't know. All wirelessly charging on one thing. It's kind of cool. But my phone. Here's why I know that I'm not being influenced by seeing it. I have to hit my phone in order to turn the screen on to see what time it is. That's the only indication of what time it is. So huh. yesterday I woke up and, and I was like, my alarm's about to go off. It like literally it's gonna go off if I don't reach over there. Reached over there, it was 629. My alarm went off at 630, but I stopped it literally like 15 seconds. So I was like, oh, okay, well that happens. This morning. Yeah. Alarm is set for 615. I don't get up at the same time every day. Different, had different things going on. That's the weird thing. Oh, two you different times. Time. Okay, that that kind of blows the the theory here. Right. That's why I'm so that, that's, shaken that's by it. That's crazy. All right. So today was day two. This morning, well, I I got to get more data, man. Okay. Because I woke up this morning and I had the same feeling. And I will say, just in full disclosure, it was six thirteen. So it wasn't six fourteen. It wasn't one minute, but it was two minutes. And I was like, okay. and I was like, so it was the second I woke day up in and a row. I was like, you had set it at the same time. I did it again. Here's the thing. That's why this isn't normal. Now, it, it well, when, it, when it, I get up at the same time, but I don't get up at the same time. I, I don't. I don't. At, I get up at the same time, and there's many times when I wake up right before the alarm goes off. And like, you, and the you 60 also go before. to bed at the same time, right? Yeah. If you go to bed at the same time and you get up at the same time, this is not unusual. But I haven't gone to bed well, at the like same to time. I was special too. So no, because your body is adjusts to a rhythm. No, I'm special. You're special in other ways. Everyone knows that. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I don't go to bed at the same time that's, every day. Yeah, that's uh, my 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 bedtime range. It's not a circadian thing. Is man. I mean, sometimes I might be like, I'm really tired, and I'll go to bed at nine thirty. Like I'll go to bed at nine thirty, and then sometimes I'll be like. It's midnight, I haven't thought about bed yet. I'll go to bed at 12.30 and any of these things can happen. It has nothing to, it has no, I just have, whatever happens, happens. And then the morning is but based on what I need to do that day. Are you, so you, when you're going to bed, do you make the decision, do you set your alarm clock? Cause that's changing too, apparently. You make a decision, is, is, will it be 6.15, will it be 6.30? Yeah, 
And how big of a range is that? No earlier than six o'clock. No later than seven thirty. And if I if if I don't set my if if I need to if I want to sleep later, I can't sleep past seven thirty. I cannot. It, I it is physically now that I've hit my forties, physically impossible to sleep past seven thirty. And I really really hate that. I can go back to sleep, but I do wake up. Well, listen, I'm gonna count the third day this morning. You got three days in a row. Um, I think you need to keep tracking this because maybe there's some. This is something Do to be harnessed. Do you think it's supernatural? No. That's really the question. <laughs> I, I wish it was, because that'd be fun to talk about. Do you think but this no, is I the beginning? can't say well, it's supernatural. Do you think it's the beginning of maybe I could be, I, I, maybe I'm like, this is my origin story for like a superhero. The guy who can wake up <laughs> bef <laughs> right before his alarm and harnesses that as a superpower. The alarm anticipator. The way, yeah, that's good. The anticipate, now, exactly. I would, that's, this is what, what I'm saying. Do? I would be called the anticipator and I'll start anticipating things right before they happen and saving people. You, well, okay, like uh, like dismantling a bomb? No, it's things that, it's, it has to be things that are based on a schedule, a, like a train a nap, is coming. If you were taking a nap and there was a bomb, you could you could you could maximize your sleep and then wake up and defuse the bomb right before it goes off, thereby getting the most rest possible. I think that's too, so. I you have a good day. I think that's too complex. I think it's more like there is a child that has fallen into the you know the place where the trains come in the subway. Okay, and you're and taking I, a nap, and as the child is following, falling, you wake up right before he hits the asphalt. No, no, and no. Catch him again. I wake up right before the train comes. I let the child be down there. Yeah, I mean, maybe well, seven. If the child eight. hit the ground. He probably died. No, 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 no. He landed on his feet and then he rolled over. And now everyone's panicking. They're trying to like, should we pull him up? And I have a little. I'm sleeping seven to eight minutes, and then I'm like, train's coming. And then I wake up, and then I see that a child. I didn't know about the child. I see the child because I've woken up because the train is coming. Then because I got long arms. Okay, I get I, it. I pull up. So you're then, really. Yeah, that's the superhero you, that I'm gonna you, be, the really, anticipator. And what that means is that you're a superhero with no real powers except that you yeah. can maximize your sleep before doing something that you need to do. Matter of fact, you're kinda like a normal person that wakes up with an alarm and I think you're something. seeing the wrong end of this because what I'm saying has nothing to do with the sleep. The sleep is only the way that the anticipator begins to anticipate. So you put the anticipator in a situation where something could be on schedule, a certain schedule. Like yeah. put the anticipator in there, put him to sleep. He'll wake up right before this thing happens. But the reason why he's so not to good. defuse the bomb, but right before the bomb goes off. So probably too late. But at least we'll know it's going to happen. Well, you could take that into account. You can anticipate the amount of time it takes to defuse the bomb if you're the anticipator. I don't think I could get that sophisticated. Yeah, then you suck. Yeah. Um, but you're going to be well rested, and I think that that counts for something. Yeah, it, it's interesting because it, it was just last week we were talking about the strange habits of successful people, and one of the things we didn't talk about was there's a number of people that wake up without an alarm clock. Mm -hmm. Oprah is the only one I remember off the top of my head. <laughs> Oprah, I mean, you can stop, the, the list could stop there and it would be a ringing endorsement. I think after a while, no, there's no ringing. That's the point. Hmm. You it's could a do, silent I, endorsement. I, I feel like. Of waking up without an alarm clock. So you can do that. And I can that, do that now. And that is a, that is a. I can't sleep past 7.30. And here's another thing, by the way. But I can't I, say five o'clock, don't need an alarm. Is that what she does? She sets a time and then just wakes up for it? I think I know why this is happening with you. Because you have inadvertently set up a system to train yourself to do this. You don't have a clock that's easily visible from your bed. You have to wake up more than you need to in order to see what time it is to see if you need to get up. Uh, for me, I have a I have a clock visible there that it it I don't use it as the alarm. I use my phone as the wake up alarm and stuff like that. But I can just easily roll over, just like kind of like a quarter of the way, open one eye, and see what time it is, yeah, and then like just that. and just immediately go back to sleep. That's also why you you're not able to sleep later you, on the weekends or something. You just need to be able to roll over, give a little crack to the eye. Oh, I've got I got. 20 minutes, right. I got an the, hour. The reason I can't sleep late is because, this is a sore subject between me and my wife. Uh, 
our bedroom doesn't ha have blocking blinds because whoever we bought the house from oh. installed you know translucent blinds. Well, you could change that. Well, yeah. Of, well, this I've been talking about. We've been in this house for going on six years, and um, what I told my I tell, tell my wife, I'm like, you know, when we were on tour, and I would be like in a hotel with those, cra you know, there's like vinyl curtains that like. Yeah. completely block out everything. Yeah. And we'd be on a weird schedule and we'd, we'd, we'd be on the bus and I wouldn't sleep right on the bus and then we would get there and we would have a show that night. I'd sleep till like noon, I felt like a teen again. The reason they I had those blocking curtains. The reason man. I can't sleep late, I believe is because the sunlight comes in and I'm, I tell Jesse, I'm like, well, that's the can first we thing. just get blocking blinds? And she says, well, I'm gonna redo the bedroom and then we'll, and I'm gonna get, she then she starts telling me all the things she's going to do on the windows, and she says, and they'll and they'll block sun, but I'm not ready, <laughs> I'm not ready to do that. And I'm like, well, I'm ready to sleep past seven thirty, and then we come to this standstill, and it never goes anywhere. It's not really a standstill; it's just kind of a clarification of who's in charge. Well, that, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not a stalemate. I think someone has won. Oh well, yeah, well she yeah, yeah. she she has won. Uh, she wins. Beauty mask, man. Well, yeah, I can't, it doesn't stay, I can't, it's. Duct tape. It doesn't stay on my face, it's See, uncomfortable. I mean, come, come on, man, I'm trying to help you and then. Do you just, still wear a beauty mask? Uh, look at this face, do I need a beauty mask? <laughs> <laughs> but you, but. No, no, you, no, no, But I usually don't. when you commit to something, you don't ever stop doing it until your death in the distant future. I think that will come up as we go through some of these things cuz um you know I'm going to talk about some use, of the things in my life I can't live while. without. And I'll uh I I used it on tour. Yeah, for some of the same reasons you're talking about. Uh just blocking out light. Especially I started using it on a plane when I was a a, a plane rider and then on the bus on tour and stuff like that and the, uh but yeah, never at home. I feel like I can still sense the sun like on my skin. Never at home. Let's get to let's get to one of these, huh? Ash okay. responded to our prompt. Um, Ash says, "A wristwatch. I always just use my phone and would get lost in the notifications easily, and sometimes even forget to check the time. It can be used for time management, meaning just the wristwatch, workouts when someone asks for the time, and even as an accessory. Oh, for fashion." Changes the game for real. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. Thank it's Ash for for the throwback answer right off the bat here. Is this is this a smartwatch or is this no. just a wristwatch? Yeah, what Ash is saying is it's just a wristwatch. It's it's an anti. It's a dumb watch. It's How do you use that for a workout? Uh, I don't. Yeah, that's a. I guess I, I, timing intervals. Timing timing and just, workout. Just timing intervals. Probably. Or like a like tab Tabata. You know, Tabata training. Never 20, heard that word. 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Tabata. It's just like high intensity interval training. Okay, the word makes me hungry. It, you, it should definitely be a food. Really? Yeah. Oh, have tonight you had the tab is Tabata Have, have you had the Tabata burger from? Tabatas. No, it's kinda like a, I don't know, it's not a burger, it's more like a, it's like a taco and a tostada, kinda, <laughs> it's like a half folded taco. I okay, <laughs> but we are talking about a regular wristwatch, which, um, I don't know, man. I I, I, res I respect this the simplification of life. I mean, we both have smart watches on, you know. Boy, you're, yours you're, is loose. You're repping the dinky. You just went like and this. And I'm repping the, Hold the on, dinky do that again. Apple watch, and I'm, I'm repping the- Why uh, is it so loose? The Garmin. Because when I get out of the shower, I like to, uh, of course, blow dry my entire body, and that includes under my watch. Because I don't, I don't like having <laughs> moist areas. You're not getting good data, man. That's so loose. You're not getting good body data. Yeah, yeah. Your biometrics are going to be way off when I'm doing a workout. Oh, but then you go, you go. Then, tight. then I, I tighten it up. But I don't like it too no, tight. No, like daily biometrics, man. Yeah, I know, I know, but there's a vein, uh, you know, there's oh, a vein God. right there, and I, I don't like. You the, think you're gonna cut the vein off? I don't, no, I, yeah, I feel like I'm crimping the vein. <laughs> I don't like my kids know that I'm like so vein sensitive. I, if sometimes I'll just be sitting somewhere, and or just a random kid will just come up and like that vein right there. Ooh. A random kid? Well, one of my three. Oh. It's like when, once you have three, I thought you were letting you random kids in again. You interact, I, when you have three kids and you interact with them, 
it starts to feel like you're just randomly interacting with children. And they touch your teens. Just to screw with me, yeah. Oh, good, yeah. They'll like, and, and you know, like back there on, when, you're, when your forearm's up, and like the back, the back of that forearm, there's that one really big vein. Oh gosh, I'm sorry if I'm freaking out other people too, but hey, I'm with you. Cause they will touch that vein. Oh, just and, to screw with me. And so you think the watch is constricting it's, the vein? It's crimping my vein, man. I just think you're you're no, it, you're potentially compromising the function of the watch. But we have smart watches now. This is a I, I'm intrigued by this question because just recently mm -hmm. I didn't tell you about I didn't <laughs> I didn't tell you about this. You don't have to tell me everything. I also didn't show you this, but but I do expect it. Um, in fact, yesterday. Okay, come clean. Yesterday, when I left my house, okay, my shirt was tucked in. Oh, you, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, all right, I see where this is going. Okay, uh, again, I feel like I am in a, I'm in a weird phase of my life right now. Yeah, you know what, it's okay, Rhett. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's very okay, I feel. Well, being in a weird phase I feel, is okay. I feel, what you're about to tell me, I don't know if it's okay. Well, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna get back to wristwatch. Just, just go with me here. Um, I feel like I'm hitting this part of my life where I understand that I am, I'm accepting some things about myself. One of the things I'm accepting is that I'm a 43 year old man, right? Um, and and I and I'm so there's little there's things happening. Like we talked last time we talked about trying to embrace like I'm going to dress in a certain way and I'm not going to try to be in in style or whatever. There's other things that are coming along with that. And one of the things just yesterday. And now, first of all, you know I wear a belt, and we're going to get to that later as well, but oh. I- uh, Stay tuned if you're a belt <laughs> person. I, well, somebody suggested that. I, uh, I I had a shirt that's a little bit too short, but I liked it, and I was like, what if I just, what if I just tucked? What if I just tucked this shirt in? And I tucked the shirt in, and I walked out, and of course, showed my wife, who immediately starts laughing, but I, because she knows that I'm coming to ask her what she thinks about right. the tucked in shirt, I don't tuck yeah. my shirt in. Because as we've established, we know who has the power. And she said, I was like, well, what do you think? She was like, do what you wanna do. Huh. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but do you like it? <laughs> and she said. <laughs> no. <laughs> she said. There's no way. No, no, she said, I think it looks, I think it looks good. Was it a. It was the shirt, you, I, we, you saw me yesterday. It was the. Um, it's a button up. It was uh, the button up. Like a. It was the button up from that sponsor where, that oh. we had, that I'm not okay. going to mention because they're not sponsoring this episode. Oh. Uh, I love the shirt. I love the way it feels. I just wish it was about an inch longer, and uh, so I tucked it in. So the shirt's the problem. And then I came in, and I, uh, I had to take a leak. And I was like, okay, as a man who has his shirt tucked in, not as a man who tucks his shirt in, but this is a man who doesn't tuck his shirt in, who is currently has his shirt tucked in, <laughs> who's thinking about transitioning to become the man who yeah. tucks his shirt in, because why not? I mean, maybe that's what I'm gonna become is the guy who has his shirt tucked no, in. No, I'll answer that question, but I'll just, I'll give you your moment. <laughs> um, and then I was like, well, you know how like, you know how like when you when, when we go uh, be on a talk show and we wear a suit. Yeah, I know you, when we be on a talk show. <laughs> and you got to take a piss right before you go on. Don't say and you, piss. It's a little harsh. And you uh, for the tone of this conversation. Take a tinkle. Good. Uh, when you and you don't want to untuck your shirt because you've got it all the way that you want. Yes. And so you do that. You use the zipper and the as the zipper is intended. <laughs> That first of all, let me just say that's that a, whole process. Of, that's a farce, man. That whole process of getting your tallywagger <laughs> out of your underwear and right. out of your zipper, right? And then I've seen childbirth uh, <laughs> easier than that. And then fully getting it, feeling like you've got it all out. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I gotta reach under there and kind of talk about crimping the vein. You, I feel like I, <laughs> you know. I feel like I got a. I feel you know like, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I feel like I got to hit the evac button. You know, you know the evac button. You know yeah. where it is, and you feel like you got to hit it just to make sure. Are you talking? And this is not an old man thing. I've been doing You're this since I was a, t a toddler. You, uh, <laughs> the taint. The the taint. You got to hit the taint. You got to press the taint. You make sure touch that it's the all taint out. Button. Yeah. 
And uh, e- evac <laughs> button is what I'm calling it. And uh, <laughs> you can't get to, you, the way you can't you talk get about to it, the tank. Anyone who doesn't know about this, what some people who don't know about it are picturing right now is some, you're, 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 you're reaching down there and like you're pressing a button and well, all of a sudden there's like a gush. Well, there, there's sometimes there's something <laughs> and sometimes there's not. That's why that's why you do it. It's a it's a safety it's a backup. Yeah, it's a um, and it and it's especially important when you've got the tallywhacker out of the pants and you're about to go on national television and you don't want to have a pee spot. So because sometimes as you're pulling it back in, yeah, you know what I'm saying. If you haven't hit the evac button, it might decide to evac on its own. <laughs> if the right if the sea, sea snake's going back in the coral, <laughs> <laughs> you know he's gonna leave a little. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna leave a little, do they spray ink? I don't know, whatever. So I'm in the bathroom and I've got it out. Great. And then I'm like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> yes. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so I put it back in and I unzip. Okay, oh. And I hit the evac button. Hold on, unzip? You had already unzipped, it was out. I undid my belt and took everything oh, out. Oh, okay, okay. You unbuttoned it and unbelted. Because I couldn't get to it. And then. But you, but you didn't put it back in first. Mm. There's no need to do that. No, I put it back in my underwear because I had to put pull, then pull my underwear down. Oh, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Forgot is, about that. This is so graphic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm speaking sorry. of graphic, I kind of need a diagram so that make sure people I'll, are following. I'll put pictures on my Instagram. <laughs> uh, no, I won't. Okay, so uh, anyway, after I took it out, and I mean by that I mean my shirt tail. Uh, I'm like, I'm. What am I doing? I I'll worry about this another day. And then I just left it out and I came in here and forgot all about it. But w- earlier that day when I was tucked, I was th- I, I, I went and, <laughs> and looked at myself in the full length mirror that we have in our bathroom. And I was like, you know, I've got these, I got these boots and I've got these jeans and I've got my button up tucked in and I've got this belt. You got this beard, you got that face. And then I looked at my Apple watch, my smart watch and I was like, that doesn't fit. That doesn't fit this persona. Like if I'm building a Sims character, Mm -hmm. this guy wouldn't have an Apple Watch. He would have like a real wristwatch. He would have an analog watch. You're talking about what I've got. No. A manly watch. No, that's that's a digital watch. It looks like a it looks like a diver's watch. I'm not I'm saying I'm talking about like a metal, like a metal watch that's shiny and has like a leather band or a metal band or something like that. A fancy, fancy watch. And so then I was like, do I need that to complete this look? And then I just- You're gonna com- buy a watch to justify tucking in your shirt? <sighs> you are, you really are upended, man. Uh, Take a, you need a, you need a retreat. No, I just think that there's a transition happening, a, tra- a transition happening. No. And I feel like if you tuck the shirt in, I at least gotta go back to, I have a leather band for this watch that I wear. I gotta put the leather band back on the Apple watch. Don't go down this road. I think I, this this is the road of oh, becoming an old man. I'm on, you're on the road too. You constantly denying it. Nope. Um, I'm not on that road. But I am on that road and I am embracing it. I'm, I'm going to, I'm embracing what is going to unfold over the next decade and what is going to fold, apparently my t-shirt into my pants and maybe my wiener into my zipper. Um, wiener. <laughs> The wiener into your um, I'm just saying, I I just feel like that's what this made me think about, is that maybe I need to watch, not because I need to do all Every, the stuff that Ash is talking about, but because I need to complete the look. Everything you've said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is important. To, yeah, it, to the decision that is obvious that you need to make. You, you've, you've, you've made every argument mm-hmm. as to why you yeah. should not be tucking your shirts in. Why? Did, what? How did? Just, how did? How's that where you land? You know on what? This? Uh, listen to Ear Biscuits this episode wherever podcasts are found, and uh, the past ten minutes, just re- listen back to it, and it will all become clear to you. You should not be tucking but in I your shirt. I should be tucking my shirt in. But I want to go back. Forget where we thought we were going for the time being. I'm going to tuck it in. I want to go back Tomorrow. to the to the peeing thing because mm-hmm. listen, man, yeah. I feel like we could help we people. We always talk about this at the beginning of Ear Biscuits. Going through. Why does this happen? Going, th- like, trying to, like, exit, get get your wiener to come out of the underwear through that yeah. thing and then go through the, it, like, to go through this gauntlet in order to pee is, 
it it kinks things up. It's not a, it does, it, <laughs> it creates problems. And even if you're gonna push that button, like, I mean, I've, I've tried some I've tried some things over the years and boy you think you're done you think you know you think you pressed a button and stuff like that and then you put it back in your pants I full on peed in my pants yeah, right. thinking that I was done yeah, <laughs> like right. yeah. and I'm talking like it within the past month it happened and I but I wasn't even tucking my shirt in Hold on you're saying that you did your normal technique and you still whizzed on yourself. <laughs> I can't remember. Is that what you're thinking? Is that I, what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I can't remember what happened, but I definitely can't just like it, it, you think it works that way, but it doesn't because you just there's too there's too many kinks in the hose. Mm -hmm. It's just not. Yeah. It's not especially with the tighter pants. The tighter pants is a problem, and that's the real problem can't really, with the with the suits that we wear that are just way too tight. But that's what they say we, sh we should be wearing. I don't want to get more graphic, but I'm going to because I yeah, think right, that it. Yeah. You need to. I think that. It, well, listen, I'm not I'm not embarrassed, and I don't. But mm. you talk about pushing the button. Yeah. I mean, I am so afraid of peeing in my own pants or dribbling or like being seen with like the dribbles on the, like coming through the the pants that sometimes you have to go all the way to just milk the snake. Oh gosh. I mean, I. You ever seen somebody milk a real snake? Like milk the venom out of a snake? Yeah, that's different. They like put the fangs over the edge of a cup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about I don't do anything with my wiener that looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, I do. <laughs> I mean, not the. I don't like. I. <laughs> I don't like put it on the. <laughs> I don't put it on the edge of the toilet seat and then bring a foot up and like st stomp like on take it. Like take the take the take the other part of the seat and bring it down. And <laughs> get 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 on your knees. It's like, Dad, what are you doing? Don't touch my vein. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you better make sure the door is locked yeah, if you're right. gonna take a knee <laughs> and use the seat to, to smush out any. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. Remnants. I don't have to do that. Oh man! Usually, it's just a, a, a quick press of the button. <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of. And if you don't know about this button, the the button, I don't think. It, you don't think everybody not, has the button? The button isn't foolproof. To me, it's like if you got a, the button is just. Picture if there were buttons along all along the exit route, and you're pushing multiple buttons. Yeah, well, that that is the foolproof way. That's that's I I mean, out of compulsion, I do that. I'll do that if I'm wearing like gray sweats. Right. If, you're wearing, <laughs> you know, if I'm wearing something that's right. like <laughs> you can't afford, if I, if you I'm, can't afford a drop. Okay, here's when I'll do the okay, milk, so here's you. when I'll milk this thing. <laughs> If I'm wearing gray sweats at someone else's house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, where I gotta come back out in a party. I, which, those, two, party. those two things usually don't happen. <laughs> I don't wanna be in my own house. <laughs> gray man. sweats at somebody else's house. Uh, you know, I haven't been in somebody else. I was at your house uh, uh, recently, uh, but I was wearing. Uh, you I think, went in the bathroom but, a long time. Well, too. I was taking a dump. I took a dump in your, in your, in your bathroom the other night. Sorry, I mean, I felt, thought that was what it was for. Um, not ideally for you, no. I mean, I don't come over to your house thinking I'm definitely gonna take a dump, but you're, Christy's done a really good job with that guest bathroom. It's a nice bathroom, I like being in there. Yeah, it's and, inviting. And if somebody's done a really good job of designing a bathroom, and as a matter of fact, everybody on the wall yes. in your bathroom is what you have on your shirt. That's right. Is it the same artist? I don't know. Um, I think it's either whoever made the wallpaper is ripping off the artist who made your shirt or it's the same artist. I like feeling like there's an Could audience be. of a bunch of people watching you watching me take milk a dump. The snake. No, I didn't have to milk the snake because I had on black jeans. Yeah, you gotta think about that. And that's why I can wear How? my underwear. Mm. How does this become a buzz? More days than If you're most still people. listening, I'm I sorry. Mean, I got a lot of backlash for confessing that like I don't, some, I, you know, I wear the same pair of underwear I don't know what I said, but now I'm just gonna say two days in a row. And you know what, since I confessed that and people just gave me shit about it, I don't do that anymore, but that's because I didn't wanna talk about, well listen. You could do what you want. I have man. a bidet and I milk the snake. <laughs> so there's nothing happening inside of my underwear except a little bit of sweat. And I don't even, that's not where I sweat. So mm -hmm. it's, I'm fine y'all, I'm fine. Okay. Don't, don't judge me. All right, uh, 
Go nope. to mythical.com. No one has judged anybody, I'm sure. Uh, we're half an hour into this podcast and uh, we've only gotten through one question and we didn't even really address it. Um, I was in the ad. Go to mythical.com, oh, okay. buy merch. Um, we are introducing merch all the time, which means that it goes away. And when We're it's discontinuing about to go away, merch all the time. When it's about to go away, you might want to know about it cuz you if you're eyeing something, you want to get it before it's gone. We have a section for that called last chance. Last chance section? Last chance the rapper. Last chance section because we don't bring things back usually. Usually. Sometimes sometimes we do, but most of the time we don't. So if you want to get it, go to the last chance section at mythical.com. All right, okay. Oh, you're still with us. Wow, wow, that was quite a test. There, there's a number of people who stopped listening to this one, or at least fast forwarded at this point. Welcome. Mari said, audiobooks is something I can't live without. I didn't think I'd retain the book as much compared to reading it myself, but I tried it out with Rhett's wreck of The Stranger in the Woods and I must say, it's been nice lounging on the sofa, having a book read to me. Kind of feel like royalty. I think read to me. Uh, <laughs> having a book. It's, 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 it's spelled the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm thinking that the book is reading to you. Well, I mean, I guess either it's one a person. of them works, technically. Having someone I, but read I, to I you. I think they intended to read, but okay. Having a book read to me. But the, or unless you think the book itself is reading. Either way, all right, I'm feeling this, Mari. I mean, I, I too have gotten more into audio books having listened to you talk about listening to books. Mm. It's like, yeah, I should be doing that. Like, So I go through like the podcast phase and then I'll go back to the book phase and um, I got too many credits on my, you know, my Audible account. So I, I, was, look, I'm, I was looking into pausing it. Oh. Which you have to email customer service to pause it, and you can pause it for three months. Just got get more books, man. How many credits do you have? Eight. I just don't. I don't. I only Keep listen. Keep it to, going. I only listen to books when I'm walking. Sometimes in the car. Yeah, I. I'm. Uh, I don't. I don't. I mean, I've never. I've never laid down and just had a book read to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do that. Uh, Sounds like fun though. Audiobooks, man. I. I feel like it has revolutionized the book industry because there has to be just, there's so many books already, but I'm reading, and I and I use the term reading to say, listen, I, I don't like to say, I don't like to qualify. I found myself for over the past year or two, I would always qualify. I read that, well, I listened to it on already, but yeah. as if it was lesser. I don't believe that it's lesser. I mean, the history, the most of the history of our species was pre-written. It was oral. oral. It was you. You got your stories via an oral storyteller, right? It's just a very recent con concept. The idea that we would you you have to justify that you're actually getting information because it's been translated into words. Screw that. But you, I mean, written words. You are currently justifying it. I'm definitely justifying it. But I'm saying I don't qualify. And you're it anymore. saying that you don't need to. Uh, yeah, exactly. So to live in live in Jesse's power. Uh, you think my wife is? Uh, I'm just trying to make that a runner for the episode that she's powerful. Oh, she's very powerful. And but in contrast to you, I have no problem with admitting that. Right. Or so living that living. So that just truth. listen to the books and. Um, but here's what I'll say. You've empowered many. You, me. Mari, I'm li I'm listening. I this morning listened to a book while I worked out. Listening, listen. I I only listen to books while driving. I got I kind of feel like I've made a choice. I really like music, but I li only listen to music while I'm writing, while I'm working. Mm. I don't listen to music any other time now. And I and it's and yeah. I have to split my time. That that's the thing for me with audiobooks is that I love listening to music so much that I kind of have to make a disciplined decision to to continue to like get into my book. But like so that's why walking my walks has become my my book zone. And I and, and there's not a temptation to listen to music. So and now when I'm mountain biking by myself, I'll also I can listen to. Uh, 
an audiobook sometimes. Well, and speaking Usually of, on the uphill, and then on the downhill part, I might switch to music. Though that's interesting, because mm -hmm. speaking of my powerful wife, um, she comes down and I, I like to work out by myself. Okay, let's just, I'll just be honest. And she knows this, but you know, there's only so much time in the day for both of us. So sometimes we're both down there. Now, what I do when I'm working out is I listen to an audiobook. And sometimes I listen to like a very dry, like academic audiobook about some scientific concept or something like that while I'm like sitting there going, <laughs> like, and she comes down there and just laughs at me. She's like, how do you do this? How do you work out hard <laughs> yeah. and listen to this <laughs> professor talk about this thing? It's the, yeah, it's the juxtaposition. She's like, I gotta have music. And so she comes down, of course she's the powerful one, so we listen to music. <laughs> and when we're listening to music, I feel like I'm missing out on something. I'm like, hmm. man, I, I had an hour here and I was- mm. Learning and, and, and if she wasn't here, I would be making my body better and also making my mind better. But now I'm just listening to drivel. I'm listening to Alicia Keys say, this girl is on fire! <laughs> as okay. I like, as is I Jesse like, doing that? Yeah, it, which by the way is an excellent song to work out to. I understand. Yeah, it's got that. It's got a big beat. And then there's that. I mean, Jesse has put together this playlist, and it's it's got some. You know, it's not current. It's got like that Gwen. St you know when Gwen Stefani like hit that stride, and was like, um, um, what's I don't know when it was. It was like ten, about ten years ago on that song with Eve, where it's like. That's good to work out, dude. Blow your mind. Yeah, and so uh, she's got that kind of thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I get this. I start moving, but then I'm just like, man, I can't wait to get in my car to learn something. You're addicted to ideas. Uh, yeah, definitely. Think about it. <laughs> think, <laughs> think about it. You're gonna get into yourself into trouble. So. What what are we talking about? Audio books. Uh, I could okay. I can't live without them. Couldn't live. I mean, I could. I, of course, I could live without them. But I, I see them as a necessary part of my life at this point. Uh, Rachel said, "Pop socket." I thought they were so dumb till I got one, and I can't hold my phone without it. Helps when I'm fidgety, but I don't switch out the designs, which you could do. Um, you pop socketed for a while. <laughs> I did, and um, my 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 phone case broke, and I haven't gotten a new one because I thought I was going to get a new phone. So instead of getting a new case, I just waited until I got a new phone. But then I never got a new phone. So now I have a caseless phone, and it's sl it's slicker because there's no case. I don't know how you live like that. And I, I was thinking about instead of getting a case, just getting a pop socket. Hey, we sell those. Mythical.com, you got you can get a mythical pop socket. Um, you might think it's stupid until you try it out. Mm, I'll try I got, it out I gotta go back to it because I've noticed that, here's the thing, I hold the phone like this and so my pinky is below the phone and and it turns out there is, you know, you think you hold it in random places but it goes to the exact same place. I hold my phone in the exact same way. Right on the vein. And then yeah, I pinch the vein. And there, now I'm getting a pain right here <laughs> on my pinky finger. This isn't funny. I mean, literally it hurts. Like when I go to like my instinctive location to look at my phone, my pinky finger, there's a pain spot. Well, and I need a pop socket. No, look, ru rubber. See, get a K. I do the same thing, but mine doesn't hurt because I got a little rubber protective little thing. And you know what? I think that's what it is. It didn't hurt until my my case has been gone long enough. You that I mean, I've you don't need a pop socket. You car, need a carpal case. tunnel. Uh, we don't sell cases. Listen, though. we maybe we should. We we sell pop sockets, but let me just say this is truth in advertising. I don't I don't use them, and I don't I don't I don't. That's not what truth in advertising I, is. <laughs> when you when you say you sell something, but you don't. No, use it, it? it is truth in advertising. Okay, well, you're being truthful about something that we advertise yeah, that but you don't use. I'm saying I want you to have the opportunity to buy a mythical pop socket. If you're into that. But I don't endorse them personally or use them. I just think that what happens with me with the pop socket is it makes it, it gets caught on. I, yeah. I just wanna get this thing in and out of my pocket mm -hmm. as quickly as possible, but I want it to have a little resistance. Uh, I can't imagine 
I've, there's been a couple of days when I've gone without a case. I mean, I have a I have a case and a and a screen protector, a, a, a glass. Why don't they just make phones with this with the case as part of it? Well, because then you wouldn't have the power of choice, and then also they wouldn't be able to brag about how thin it is. Make a phone good enough that you don't need a case. Well, I mean, that's how you know Neil deGrasse Tyson famously doesn't have a phone case and when asked about it, he will take his phone and play around with it and show that he's like, I'm not gonna drop this. Why would I need a case? The only reason I would need a case is if I needed the phone to be protected from me. And I don't need to protect my phone from me. But I, I'm not Neil deGrasse Tyson. I may be addicted to ideas, <laughs> but I'm not Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> And I need a case because I do need to protect my phone from myself. But I don't need a pop socket, but if you need one, more power to you. Jafar says, a memory foam pillow. I'm a tall fellow who has tremendous back and neck issues and switching to this pillow brought the pain I deal with in the mornings to an almost tolerable level. I have so much trouble sleeping without it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Um, the way you sleep is key to you know, dealing with chronic pain, but it, that can't be the extent of it. Jafar, I'm gonna I'm gonna point you to uh, Rhett's video where he he shows you his stretching routine. <laughs> he hasn't made it yet, but uh, we're really laying on the pressure now. It's well, like, uh, here's what I'll say. You know, this you can go. It's I mean, needed. I just went on the internet and put together a bunch of exercises. It's not like I'm some stretching guru. I do plan we'll on making a video about it, but like you can also just put together what feels good to you. Now I had neck pain. When I went to my uh, physical therapist, who you know told me I needed to invite my rib, rib to the party, to the party. Yeah. Uh, I believe I also told you at the time that she sold me a flaxseed-filled cylindrical pillow that um, I put it up on Amazon. This thing is called Sa Lord. Sachi Organics Buckwheat. Oh, so it's not flaxseed, it's buckwheat. Yeah, flaxseed's like what you eat. Cylinder neck pillow. I think some of them do have flaxseed in them. And um, I'm still using that thing almost a year later. But That's the only pillow that you use? So yeah. there's nothing else? Nothing else, but uh, I kinda hate it. Do you sleep on your back or your side? But I do think side? it works. It forces me to sleep on my back and it, it arches you, my. Could you sleep on your it, side? It pushes with it? my chin down into my neck, and it kind of so it stretches out the back of my neck in such a way that and it doesn't hurt when you wake up. Um, there's like it kind of puts it in ex, ex, traction in a good way. Oh yeah, it's supposed. I mean, the reviews are are really positive on Amazon. Uh, Six hundred and seventy reviews, four and a half stars. I mean, it costs like thirty seven bucks, but I'll tell you, it was. It took it took weeks of just saying, you know what, I'm committed to this thing, and even now, like almost a year later, whenever I roll on my side, it's really not that comfortable. So you I kind of wake, wake up. up. I wake up enough to to correct and go back to my back, but um, mm. that, that's kind of part of it. Uh, I guess this memory foam pillow, the way that this one is shaped for Jafar, kind of helps. I'm seeing a new one's being pushed on. Instagram right now that has a hole, it's a memory foam pillow with a hole in the middle basically that simulates the same posture that my seed pillow There's gives There's also me. the square pillow. Well that one also has, if you sleep on your That's side. That's a side sleeper. It has two, two small, it has a big hole in the middle and two smaller holes on the side so if you roll on your side, your ear is like suspended in a, a crater. I'm like, okay, this sounds like a gimmick. I'm Feels a, a little over, I'm a, I'm overboard. A I'm gonna stick with my uh, my buckwheat pillow. Yeah, what well, you know, I told you about the. I do uh, think it's helped the uh, the contraption that I bought that was designed to keep you sleeping on your back. That had like it was a belt that you wore that right. had these big plastic balls. balls, and so if you slept on your side, you would be sleeping on top of a ball, and you'd wake up. I tried it for about a week, and I just I'm a side sleeper. And I want I I want to be a back sleeper. I do. I think it's supposed to be. The, it, it's the best for a number of different reasons. But I don't know. I'm not having trouble with my back or my neck because of sleeping. So I'm kind of just on my side. But here's my resist. Now I want to get your take on this because my okay. resistance, my resistance to a particular pillow. Now I have two pillows. They're both down pillows, but one of them is one of them is too, is too like. 
your head goes all the way to the ground, that doesn't work. And the other one, maybe it's not down, it's, it's like synthetic down and so it's actually got some support so it, it feels good. That way you don't hear the echoes of the screaming geese in your ears. My resistance to pillows, specialty pillows, is a fear of becoming reliant upon them. Yeah, I was about to say, I think I would, I will, tr I travel with my uh, buckwheat pillow. It's small enough. It's like a quarter the size of like a normal pillow. It's just big enough to go underneath my neck and like come across my shoulders a little bit. Yeah, you can take it with you. Yeah, but that's that, that's why I've resisted, and, and I'm not currently hurting. But I'm glad uh, I'm glad uh, Jafar has found a pillow. Something something else that um, I was trying to think, how would I answer this question? I've got a couple of things. Um, a pill box. I've finally gotten a day of the week pill box. Oh, for so my you're supplements. not embracing your old age? Oh, <laughs> Mr. Pillbox. Oh, we talk about embracing your old age. Yeah, I know Christy told you this the other day. We were sitting down for dinner. You have dinner. a special pillow and you have a pill box. I mean, you should just come along and start tucking with me. We were sitting down for dinner the other night and uh, Christy said, you are such an old man. What are you drinking? It's, it's, it's 7 p.m. We're eating dinner and I'm like, coffee. I was drinking a, I, I mean, it was, it was a Saturday. I like to stay up late, so I'll drink, I'll, drink a, I'll drink my afternoon coffee later in the day. I realized I'd forgotten about it, but here I was at the dinner table eating dinner and drinking hot coffee, and that's such an old man thing to do. But you know what? I can't live without my pill box because that, it's, I don't know, there's something rewarding about, I mean, it's so efficient. Like it makes me happy to know that like I can efficiently just dump, open the, open the Thursday container, pop them all into my mouth and how just swallow well, how, away. How, 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 what are you taking? It's the stuff that Christy gave me. You know where the power lies. Yeah, but do you know what it is? She could be poisoning you. Um, she could be, but I think that's that's part of the, I'm how many part of the trust. How many things are we talking about? Um, there's two huge black pills. Horse pills. That are like. Um, tranquilizers, <laughs> tranquilizers. It's, so, it's something that you and her both over the course of the pandemic have like said I needed to have, but I don't know, it's a black pill. And then I've got the wellness pill that is like a multivitamin, you, you, has you, everything. You, you, you legitimately do not know what it is. It's just like, no. my wife told me to take it, I drink my coffee the, I know and I just put it in my mouth. Melatonin is one of them, but I think that one's really small. There's a fish oil one that you I You don't think, need to be taking melatonin every day. I'll let you vet my pills later. It's a, it's a small pill. Well, it doesn't matter how small it is. You don't well, need to be taking melatonin every well, day. Well, just tell me the days I need to take it and I can put it in that corresponding bin. I'll send you, and I could be wrong about all this. <laughs> that's what that's what scares me, I'll talk to your wife about it. Again, it's like I, I trust her. I'm not addicted to that idea of knowing what's in my pill box, you know? <laughs> like an old man should. Where they put the pills in the box, all I do is I take this yeah, for right. the correspondent yeah. day and I you're, just swallow all the pills. Your your person your case that you're not embracing your old age is, <laughs> is diminishing quickly falling apart. <laughs> I like the feeling of the efficiency of it and it also helps me know what day it is. Well that's important. Yeah, they that's certainly important. run together. That's important. Um I have too many uh, I have too many pills. In fact, I was recently searching for like, how could I get a pill box that could you need hold all of the things that I take? You need a series of connected buckets like Bozo the Clown's uh, ping pong toss game. And I and I did, I, I don't remember what, when it was, it was last year or a year or two ago, posted a picture of all the things that I was taking on my vacation. I was like seven, I don't know, two week vacation, here's what I'm taking. And of course, that's when the internet experts come out and they're like, there's no reason to be taking all of that stuff. Oh yeah. You just pee it all out and do it right around. Okay, maybe, yeah. As we, mm -hmm. but we, we can talk about, you wanna talk about pee again? Is that what you're I asking? I wanna use a pill box. That's justification enough. That's what you should tell them. Well, I can't, th every single morning, I do something that would uh, drive you absolutely nuts now that you've mentioned the pill box. You open every one individually? It's almost a ritual at this point. I have a shelf that has all the things that I take. Now when I wake up, I take four things right before my workout. 
And then after my workout, I take about five or six things. And then at night before I go to bed, I take about seven or eight things. Because you're addicted to ideas. And uh, it's I have reasons for every single thing that yeah. I'm taking. And, uh, but yeah, it's almost like, okay. You should try having no reasons like me. Here's, here's, here, here's this thing. I open it, I take it out, I, dr I take it. And I'm like, this is not sustainable, but it's only something that has worked in quarantine because. Yeah. Well, and, you got time to burn. But when we went on our little uh, beach vacation, a couple, I don't know when it was, a month ago or so, again, I don't have a pillbox that can accommodate this, so I put everything into a, a <laughs> one Ziploc bag, and I was like, I'll sort it out when I get there. Oh, God. And then that was when I discovered that I've got a number of things that look similar. And I'm like, is that the vitamin D <laughs> or is that the garlic? Mm, well, I need both of them. So anyway, I I, I just I, if you if you know of a big pill box that can accommodate about twenty supplements and then has it divided up by day, uh, that doesn't look like a tackle box because I I'm thinking about getting a tackle box <laughs> because yeah, I feel like yeah, that might be the only thing that will hold it. Oh man, I remember I had a tackle box as a kid and I would store my GI Joe men in there. I'd totally forgotten about that. Like all about those tackle little boxes? all those little compartments, it's so fun. Well, maybe I'll get you a tackle box for your birthday. Man, I love, I love it. I love the feeling of opening up something, and then the way that tackle boxes work is that you you open the top shell case, and then it it has the fans like the, out the tiered layers, it's like stadium seating in there. Yeah, it just kind of splays out before you, man. Yeah. Man, it's, it's amazing. Okay, well maybe tackle box is what, what we're talking about here. A product that I thought was stupid until I found that we had one, we purchased one, it, and now I love it. I'm looking for I'm looking for excuses to use it. A dust buster. Mm. I remember when those the first hit, hit, the, hit the scene in the 80s. Yeah, my mom would uh, have one. Nana and Papa had one at their house and I was like, wow, it, you know, it, it's rechargeable, it's a, it's a vacuum cleaner in the palm of your hand. It's just so much better than like a broom. What are you cleaning up with it? Um, I think they bought it for for like kitty litter that like strows out on the ground around the kitty litter box. I think that's why it, it, it I think it appeared around the same time as Sokka mm. at the house. But now it's recharging in the garage because apparently Lily didn't want to keep it in her room. So like I'm just looking for like little corners of the garage. Like I'm like, oh, there's I could get now I can get all the dust out of this corner of the garage. <laughs> you know, it's here, I'm here. Have a little bonding moment. You know, it's just you know, it's just not an old man. Just things that bring a, <laughs> bring man. joy into your dusting into dust your life. Dusting the man. corners. <laughs> dust dust buzzing the corners of his tackle box. <laughs> <laughs> um Samantha really brought something that I have become completely dependent upon, a white noise machine. My daughter is two and has been using it since she left the womb and now I can't. Even I can. Even I can't sleep without one. Um, I've talked about my white noise machine. Yeah. Uh, which is not, it, it, it's electronic but it's, it's supposed to like resemble the sound of a fan and it's very loud and I have it on every single night for a number of reasons. One, my wife, she's so powerful and when you're that powerful, sometimes it leads to snoring. Oh God. Um, you know, cause you're just trying to contain it. And uh, and then also, you know, if my kids are having emergencies or whatever, I want them to deal with that on their own. So mm -hmm. um, I, I have this thing and then when I travel, I have to get my phone, I have the white noise app on my phone but I, again, I have some shame around this because I have become, I mean, I haven't tried to sleep without it, but I mean, even when I went on my solo trip and I'm out in the middle of nowhere, I'm like, I need my little And so I'd use my, I'd, I'd use my phone. My phone would be like dead in the morning. Hmm. Um, I don't know, and, but I, I like to think about things in terms of how functional they would be as I, as I have said for years, when the war comes, you know, <laughs> uh, when when World War Three happens, and we're all, you know, basically when the apocalypse happens, and I'm sort of like my family and I are walking across a, a, a desert landscape, and you know, when I become meat again, and 
and let me just interject that we've established that you have already mastered as the anticipator, the art of waking up without an alarm clock, yet you're very concerned that you're not able to go to sleep without the constant uh, yeah, noise yeah. of an app playing. So it's like, I, I don't know. Well, here's the thing, know, as a despotic. I'm in a molehill here. As a despotic uh, apocalyptic ruler who keeps people on leashes, uh, you know, which is the, the, the role I want to assume in the apocalypse, some sort of overlord, um, I can't be the guy. I can't have like a necklace made out of human baby bones around my neck and then need a white noise machine to go to sleep. That's bad for the image. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the what's gonna save this for you. Hmm? Meet again's gonna be like, hey, Jonathan, get in here. <laughs> Make, you, you're make, gonna stay up all night. Making noise. And you're gonna <laughs> in my ear. There's no way that, that, <laughs> that won't work. You just got a guy gargling all That would be very annoying. In your tent. The, it, it is the perfect pitch. Binaural, you could have Jonathan and Taylor, one on each ear. Jonathan and Taylor. And then Thomas is down there massaging your feet. Hmm. Okay, well, I, I get, I'll, I'll get people to do my white noise for me. Yeah, but I, 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 feel, I, I feel self-conscious about the fact that I need it, but I'm such a light sleeper, man. I wake up, at, I wake up so easily. Most despots get Fed grapes. Grapes won't be a thing in the apocalypse. I don't think they can actually, I don't think that agriculture can be sustained. Should the tea so be enjoy, silent enjoy and Enjoy the grapes. Despo, despo, I don't know. I don't think so. Is it French? You mean like depot? Yeah, silent and depot, but not despot. Should it be though? Just in our little corner of the internet, can we make the tea silent and despot? Sure, I mean, you do what you want to. Despa, despa. Despo. Um, do you wanna talk about another one or do you just wanna give your wreck? Oh, you ready for my wreck already? I mean, I, I you know what, let, let, let. This, has been a, this has been a good episode. Let's go out on a high note. Okay, sure. Let's not sure. push it. Okay. I f you know what, I feel like the energy's been really good this episode. You don't wanna ruin it? I don't wanna ruin it. You feel like it's hanging in the balance? We covered a lot of ground, yep, we've, we, We've dangled out the zipper, and and now it's it's all about. We just, spent a lot of time talking about. It's all that. about. I'm pull, sorry. Pulling it back in in a way to not do damage to anybody's pants. Oh, just because I said it, I just want to give credit to the person who said it. Uh, Fish, oh, the, Fisher. We have so many more. This is such a good prompt. Well, we'll all do right, it let, again. I just want. I just want. Oh, you want to do it again? I just want to. You want to do a sequel to this episode? No, no, not a sequel. Like just. Well, let's just, just keep going. Is it, what, I just want to give credit because I said I would to Bonsai Breath Fisher, who says a belt. I grew up wearing belts because I had to. Never thought anything of it. Continued to wear belts every day. Only when my favorite belt broke and I was beltless did I realize how much I need it. Uh, if I can name two things that I need, it's the white noise machine and a belt. Because I mean, of course, if I'm wearing like those gray sweats and at somebody's house and I'm coming out, you know, with a peace spot, I don't need a belt for sweatpants. But for jeans, I gotta have a belt. Pants just work their way down. Things get exposed if I don't have a belt. Yeah, I'm. I must not be shaped the same. It's as a you. different. It's a it's a body shape thing. Yeah, I don't. Need you a don't belt. need a belt. I don't. Uh, Does that make me better than you? Maybe. Uh, well, that's a, that's that's up to you. Okay, then it does. Yeah. Okay. Um. But I uh, I don't feel, it feels like there's a part of me missing if there's not a slight cinch. If there's a slight cinch in the midsection area. Gotta mm. have that cinch. So you like like pinching the vein, you like to pinch the veins? It doesn't pinch, it's just a cinch. There's a difference between a pinch and a cinch and you really need to know that. If you're thinking about a belt as a pinch, then of course you're not gonna wear one. Let's give a shout out to the people that Submitted some good stuff that we're not. We're not. Just we're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna acknowledge their contribution, but we're not wow, gonna discuss. This is risky. It. Never done so that. So you're before. basically saying we're just throwing these to the wayside. Oh no, we're not. You think we're gonna do this again? We never do things again. Well, that's not true. But okay, go ahead. We can always get more. Chloe said a plug-in mug warmer. I drink my coffee very slowly, and this thing keeps it warm forever. It doesn't provide any links to anything, but it looks like a. Just a, a white. Almost looks like a wireless charger that you put a phone on. That her, um, in this case, Good Mythical Morning mug, I love that. It says, oh, $15 on Amazon. Didn't put the link though. 
Fisher said a belt. Klaus said a squatty potty. Neppy Nut said uh, a quality set of kitchen knives. Having a good set of knives up my cooking game dramatically, and I still have no idea how I ever imagined, very, ever managed very without important. them. Very important. Um, yeah. I mean, we can still talk about this again, but I'll, I'll give a wreck. You ready for a wreck, baby wreck, baby one, two, three, four. Um, I don't know what it is about Amazon's television shows, but I think once I, because, and I'm not loyal to them as a streaming platform, but I start watching things on HBO and it does lead to seeing the other things that I wanna check out. Um, so I, I started watching, um, what's it called? Uh, Painting with John which debuted, uh, like I said, on HBO back in January. Um, and you said Amazon series. Did I say Amazon? Yeah. Why did I say, HBO. You said Amazon because I think we were just talking about Amazon links to uh, HBO, yeah. Painting with John is just a totally laid back, uh, comedic, introspective, almost calming, um, well it is it's, it's kind of a calming show that you can just kind of, just kind of chill out to. I, what I didn't realize is that John Lurie, the uh, writer, uh, producer, star of 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 this show, um, he was not only a musician and a painter. This is about him painting and an actor. But he's um, he's a founding member along with his brother of the band the Lounge Lizards, which is like this like. Jazz type. I, I've never listened to Lounge Lizards. Uh, yeah, I, I just heard of them. But I've heard of them, and he tells the story of meeting Barry White. He tells a lot of stories from his life, and it's like with, while he's painting, but in an anti Bob Ross way. Like he even says in the opening episode, he's like, Bob Ross was wrong. Like everybody can't paint. You know, he has that. Yeah, right, right. right he has right, this right. like. He's got some know, snark. I don't know if acerbic is the right descriptor for his. Uh, uh, comedic sensibility, but it's it, it's like an Anthony Bourdainish kind of a tone. Yeah. Uh, but he's also kind of goofy at times, and uh, you can tell that this show is just kind of his brainchild, and it's just it's just kind of a nice way to just relax, hear a guy telling telling some stories. Get, it'll get you thinking, and um, uh, I don't think it's for the children. Unless you, I think unless you rated, got adult children, I think it's rated R, but I can't quite remember. I just liked it, so I don't think shows are oh, rated Adam R. Adam McKay is an executive producer. Dang, Adam McKay, man, he does, he he's, does, some, he's he's got a lot of stuff. He going does on. some good stuff. Uh, he also had a show called Fishing with John. I've heard about Fishing back in with John. Nineteen ninety one. I didn't realize it was the same guy, but pe I've seen I never people heard of on that. online talk about Fishing with John. Huh? So painting with John. Check it out on HBO if you, if you think you're if you think you're into that. Well, thanks for engaging with us. Thanks for enduring the half hour conversation about finding the uh, the special button in your taint to uh, be able to leak your liz your lounge lizard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you heard it here from the anticipator and the. The clueless pill taker. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's a super duo. Hashtag Ear Biscuits. We'll just talk at you next week. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.